I'm Charlotte and this is Time Emma Tries to Read and um, I don't know what I'm doing, I've literally set the camera up, I've got a new chair in the shed, um, took forever to set the shot up, I've still got chewing gum in, we get rid of that, <laughs> Idris is outside, he's driving Stephen mad so I cannot film this <laughs> for too long and I've got books just everywhere. So. Um, mm. I've read I've read quite a lot um, considering I don't feel like I've had a lot of time but we've started a kind of new routine where I sort of I demand more time um, not that no one is willing to give me that time but I'm not willing to give it to myself so Stephen has been amazing and if I say I'm going to go and do some reading or some research he's like go so that has meant that I have got a lot more done also I prepared fingernails pretty fingernails for not for this video but but sort of for the video um it was meant to be filmed monday but we have a child that is um not willing to do any of those things so yeah it is all chipped now i'm sorry about that um okay i have right let me where should i start i feel like i'm leaning really far away and i want to sit forwards but i don't want to jeopardise the shot. Now I've set it up. So um, I read uh, the Hedgerow Handbook, which may not sound like an exciting book. I don't know what um, you know what it is that you enjoy when you read, but I do like a little bit of nature stuff. And um, this is Recipes, Remedies, and Rituals by Adele no Nozda Nozda. My usual pronunciation issues so the hedgerow handbook um this was a bargain sale item in wh smith's which is like a stationer slash bookshop in the uk and this is really cool it's got um pictures of all the things that you might find in a hedgerow there's some borage i've taken the autofocus off so i don't even know if that would have focused um there's some borage so all the little things you might find in hedgerows including things like nettles that are edible. It is UK based, so US people you might not be that interested, or anywhere else you might not be that interested, but I'm sure there's one similar to this for your area. And it sort of teaches you recipes, remedies, and rituals. It's really nice. But as with all books like this, even though I, I like the illustrations, I think, in fact, I love them, when it comes to identifying the plant, I would kind of wish they'd put a photo. I just, some of the pictures genuinely didn't look like the parts of the plant that for me are the, the identifiers of that plant. So since I've read that, me and Idris have been going around eating things like young beech leaves out of our hedge and uh, the leaves of sticky jacks, which are the plants that you can stick onto people's backs. I'm sure they exist the world over in many different forms. They're called lots of different things, but I call them sticky jacks and you can eat the leaves. Uh, the young ones are the nicest. So yeah, we've been having fun with that. The other thing, what else have I read? I finished uh, Mother by Sarah Knott, An Unconventional History. Um, I don't think I showed you last time, or if I did, I don't think it zoomed in well. I don't know if you're going to be able to get this. This is such a small picture, but the picture is by Jenny Saville, Study for Pentiminti. I don't know if you can see that, but it's an awesome, you can see my nails and how gross they are, but um, it's an awesome charcoal sketch of a pregnant woman holding a sort of unwilling sort of toddler aged child and you can see that she's pregnant and you can also see she's holding a young infant so it covers those stages um i talked about this book last time i got it out from the library and i was really loving it and now i finished it and it was awesome um it again i'm not sure if you if you aren't a mother or you're not intending on being a mother how much you get out of it but if you're wanting to go to to become a mother or um and again, I do say mother because it very much focuses on, on the mothering experience. It's not a parenting experience. Um, she does lightly touch upon uh, writers who had, who were mothers um, as part of a lesbian couple, but there's not like a whole chapter dedicated to it, which I thought was a bit sad because there was one um, chapter called Queer Ideas at the Clinic. And I just, I just assumed that that was going to be about LGBT issues and... Um, motherhood and maybe trans motherhood but it wasn't she does mention those things but she mostly focuses around things i think because she's focused on a historical gaze and there's a lot more um well there's very little literature historically about motherhood 
um, and certainly the modern issues, and I use them in inverted commas, that we think of when we think of LGBT and mother, I suppose you're really coming up to the modern age and it's turning into a social history rather than a history. So I don't know. It's an excuse because she does talk about fairly contemporary mothers. Um, but yeah, so she's a historian and she has her life disrupted by motherhood and I totally related to it. And so much of it was raw. She has a child that's colicky, refluxy, doesn't sleep. She used to do lots of thoughtful things and now she can't. So I, I definitely related to it on that level. And I just found the anecdotes really, really powerful. Um, I will say that it did almost make me broody, which if you know me, is weird. <laughs> I, I do flip back and forth between wanting um, a larger family and not. Um, mostly it's not. Um, and so I was surprised at reading about all these hardships, how that made me feel like I wanted to do them again. What it is, I think, when you put anything into literature or art or when you sort of remove it from the immediate present and turn it into an art, then it it becomes glamorous and seductive again, which is, you know, wonderful. But it's all those little notions of hanging up white sheets on the line and um you know looking down at your sleeping baby it's all those things that that drew me into motherhood in the first place and whilst it does have a lot of those things it has a lot of other stuff as well <laughs> and even the other stuff because she's contextualizing it within all of the brilliant stuff you start to think would it be that bad <laughs> to have another one um it's a firm no this week because we have had some fairly nightmarish behavior um then yesterday, this is how I kind of up my game. I read all of Charlotte, a novel by David Fuenico, Fuequinos. I'd never heard of him before. I knew of this book. This was a bargain, 25p book from my local library. They were having a sale and I almost yelped when I saw it because um, this uh, Charlotte Salomon, who this is about, is an artist I've been really interested in just for a the last six months or so I read an article about Christmas time about her art and about her death um, in uh, the Holocaust how she had a family history of suicide and boy did she have a family history of suicide it's out of this world um, just the, the discussions of mental health issues all of those the discussions on art what it is to be creative all of those things really drew me into this article and this book is like a novel, a sort of, a no well, it says it's a novel. It calls itself a novel. It's sort of a novelization, but it's done in these little sort of pithy sentences. So it's kind of, um, I start to find, um, what are Charlotte's first memories, smells or colors? More likely they are notes, the tune sung by her mother, that kind of thing. It's, it's very sporadic. Um, David Fuen says that's the only way he could write it that he, he tried other ways and this is the way and he actually puts himself in, in the first person narrator's position he, he says the word I he talks about visiting the places so it's 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 very much a like a biography but then very similarly to this actually it does a lot of um, artistic license imagining how she felt and the smells of things and the sights of things etc it is breathtaking it is beautiful but I I don't know a hundred percent whether it's all down to this this author or whether it's just that her story is is in itself breathtaking and unbelievably tragic obviously a lot of trigger warnings to go with this um yeah i liked his style and there were some things he that i know he couldn't have known but that he put himself in the position of how she would feel and really gave it life so there's you know Obviously, he's a talented author and I, I would be interested to read his other stuff. But this particular one, I kind of feel like her story tells itself in some, in some ways. I don't mean that. That sounded really, really critical. I just think she's fascinating. So I would like to see she's she's written a book um, or she wrote a book with lots of um, text and lots of drawings. And it was called Life? Question mark or Theatre? Question mark. And you can get, I think, a fairly edited down version um, in print. But I th I'm going to see if my local library has got it because um, I want to check it out and see if I really want that version or if I want a fuller version, which is a lot.
a lot a lot more money um and then this is what happens when you leave your book on top of your car for two days and two nights i was looking for it everywhere <laughs> and then stephen came in definitely several days after i'd last seen it and said why is your book outside in the rain and weirdly it just rained in the last like hour so it would have been fine but no um yeah very crinkly it's okay i'm not i'm not as prissy about books as i used to be so this is fine and i've got a copy of virginia wolf's to the lighthouse which i did a similar thing to but it involved tea and i really treasure that book because I don't know, there's something really, um, what's the word I'm looking for, tactile about about it. It's mine and it definitely isn't anybody else's. And I'm feeling a little bit similarly about this. So it's a bit of a shame. It won't live as long, this book. Um, its life will be cut short by this. But um, yeah, I, I'll keep it with me. And it's really good. So I know that I stopped it um, a little while ago. And I actually thought, God, I'm just going to the Asian readathon, I really wanted to do it, but like any readathon, the pressure of having a TBR was just getting to me. And I was thinking of just jacking the whole thing in and coming to those books as and when I felt the mood for them. And I still might do that, but I'm definitely going to finish this book now. I'm back into the story. I've um, come out of my dark place that I was in. And I'm, you know, obviously, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to read this. And I'm ready to finish it and enjoy it. And I might, you know, I've, I'm running out of time. To finish the Asian read thong because I've got three other novels and they are huge but yeah if I finish this and start another I will be happy but I actually would like to blame multi reading for this okay because if this had been the book I was reading and I wasn't reading anything else I would have looked everywhere I'd like to think I would have looked on top of the car but that is a new place for me to have left something but because I'm reading a few books I just thought oh it'll turn up and I grabbed one of the other ones so yeah um, I've also got some new books to share. Uh, I'll just show them to you really quickly because I have got way too many new books to share in just one video. I have gone silly. The last two months are the worst or best two months for book buying I have ever had. I've lost the plot. I don't know how to rein it in. I'm not, having tried reasonably hard to set myself the goal of not buying any books, I kind of feel now that I just want to totally rebel and just buy tons. So I have been. These arrived this morning, which is why I've chosen these out of the many, many books in my house that are new to show you. Um, I got um, Pachinko by Min Jin Lee, and I was so happy to see that this beautiful cover continues inside. So this has been on Instagram loads. It's not a new book, I don't think. No, 2017. Um, but I was, um, I just came to the party late, basically. And I'm excited. I'm excited to have it now. So um, I think David Mitchell sums it up when he says a deep, broad, addictive history of a Korean family in Japan. So this kind of came to my attention again with the Asian Readathon. I saw a few people reading this and I already had wanted it. So I did it. And I'll tell you where I got these three from in a mo. Um, I also got um, Afwa Hirsch's Brit-ish on race, identity and belonging. Um, I don't think I think this is, is this last year or is this this year? Um, this is 2018, so it was last year. This was prompted by Sean of Shani Reads sharing an amazing link um, to an interview that Afwa Hirsch was part of the panel of people um, discussing the recent sacking of a BBC radio personality, Danny Baker. He was sacked for um, an offensive racist tweet um, talking about the new royal baby and comparing the baby to a monkey. Anyone who hears that who has never heard of Danny Baker is totally fine with that being considered racist because obviously it was. But um, weirdly, the Brits have rallied round Danny Baker as he is a bit of a, a sort of, um, what do you call it? Uh, there's a word, you know, when someone's just really popular in popular culture, he's a little bit subversive and he seems like the nice guy. So I think a lot of people have supported him. And this panel was of white people, most of whom were supporting Danny Baker and really angry that he'd been sacked because basically he claimed that he didn't realise the tweet was racist. If you're wondering how on earth people could have supported him. And Afwa Hirsch just, you know, 
couldn't believe what she was hearing and was so eloquent and Shan shared the link with me because I think she knows that I never watch the TV anymore and she knows somebody's got to try and keep me relevant and she said I'm going to get her book and I was like she's got a book so I think we probably both had this arrive at virtually the same time um, and then I got Katharina Vermette's The Break so Katharina Vermette is a Matisse writer and this book is I, I believe it's kind of a murder mystery book but it's got the serious tint of it being a, a book that's raising the awareness of the indigenous women that are going missing in America in North America and Canada um, this is set in Canada I believe so I don't know how she's going to handle that because you know murder mysteries are often um, I don't read a lot of crime but you know sometimes I guess that with the TV show certainly there's an element of um, I'm losing my words. There's uh, gratuitous violence, you know, and that kind of morbid curiosity. And when that's a completely random, made-up person, I suppose you can distance yourself from that. But when you're raising awareness about the very real pressing issue of things that are happening within your community, as Katharina Vermette is doing, I'm wondering how she will balance those two. But this is called The Break, and this is um, supported by people like Margaret Atwood. Um... Yes, I think that's going to be good. And I got these three from Hive. So hi, the Hive, is it the Hive or Hive? I think it's Hive. I'm looking at my notes. Hive is a website that you can access in the UK. I don't know what it's like anywhere else. And you buy books off of there. So you're buying it from an internet warehouse, but you can choose to donate. I think it's 10% of your purchase money to an independent bookshop, as long as they've signed up. So I tried to donate to my local bookshop, but they're not signed up. A lot of independents quite rightly make the argument that it's still shopping on the internet and they would rather you came into the shop so I do understand that argument and I could have bought these from my local bookshop um with me it's a difficulty of finding time to get down there I'm sure it is for you guys too and I just was feeling like I deserved a treat as all of the book purchases of late have been me treating myself so I couldn't donate to them I couldn't donate to pretty much any bookshop in South Wales so I ended up donating to Mr B's Book Emporium I think it's Book Emporium that's in Bath because Sean of Shiny Reads was telling me how amazing it is and I just it popped into my head so I donated to them the reason I did that is because I am trying to source my books more ethically and I'm going to do a separate video now about that. So if you are interested about some of the things I've been reading and if you've got anything you want to contribute to that discussion or, you know, you don't have to want to make a change. But if you're just interested in some of the things I've come across, then I will be putting up another video shortly, which I'm going to try and film now before I'm disturbed. But we shall see. OK, um, I hope you're all well and thank you for watching. Bye.